someone's stolen your car. Some guy called Danny with a mullet, they look really scary. You've been painting with that hoodie on. Can you tell? <laughs> <laughs> he does brush his teeth. It's his weekly brush, that's what it is. Once a week. Yeah. Right then. Silverstone day two. Today's the club enduro. The golf's ready. RS3's ready. The diesel TT's ready. None of the drivers are. I need to get ready. But Dylan's going out first. So. Watch the video from yesterday if you haven't already, because that was pretty decent. Yeah, see what we can do in qualifying. Who's stolen your car? Some guy called Danny with a mullet, it looked really scary. Is it because you needed that extra edge for the last race? Yeah, I need, I need the professional driver, so I've got Danny in. <laughs> see what happens there. First in B anyway. Yeah boy, mega.
it, so all is over. Seventh place, on par with what we said, what worst quality we ever had before, which is crap. The thing we've done again, we've come in the middle of a drying track, gone out with fresh tyres on again, trying to scrub them in for the race, it might be wet. We'll have a little moment which you'll see where it goes. The front end rear tyres will never come up to ten. Anyway, we're going to string it up, see what's what. Scott's second in class, and Brad, I think we're 11th. But we're going to have a few little tweaks for his car, see if we can make it a bit more suited to him. Getting used to it a bit more. It's been a while since I drove it. My fan club are here. So the rain is slowing. I go as far as saying stopping. Do we need them high pressures that we've got? The soft dampers that we've got? Don't like it every race. It's a nightmare. Let's go look at what cars we're racing anyway. There you can see there is a line in the cloud, there is something brighter in the distance and I'm not sure if that's coming this way or is, uh, is going away from us but uh, as far as the classes are concerned because the overall championship in the Class B title has already been resolved in favour of Scott Parkin, he wrapped that up at the last meeting at Donington Park uh, in his Class B Darkside Developments uh, car. Uh, and he's sharing with Dan Sylvester uh, today, who'll start that car. Besides him is number six, Dylan Brichter, starting the dark side Audi uh, TT. Row six on the inside is number 87. Uh, that is the Brad Kaler Audi RS3. On row seven on the inside is the man that's already wrapped up the championship. That's number 89. That's uh, Scott Parker, although the car will be started by Dan Sylvester. <laughs> of racing in this to give our club and Joe a championship. And there's the other, there's yeah. the other parking brother. He's he, he's caught, uh, Ryan. He's caught Ryan. Yeah. This is where it gets really interesting. They're different classes, aren't they? Yeah, it's got class B, Ryan, and class A. Yeah. Won't share with Dylan Brickler. Dylan Brickler started here. Seventh Darren Ball, eighth Dylan Brickler, ninth Scott Parkin. Oh, sorry, Dan Sylvester. It's just Dan Sylvester that was driving that car, not Scott Parkin, although it says Scott Parkin on the dash, which is what confused us, and 10th and 95 car Luke. So there's no Parkins? There's no Parkins. They're parked up at the moment.
uh, Andrew Rath, seventh in the uh, Cupra. Is he about to be eighth? Because alongside him, going through farm, is uh, Dan Sylvester. Sylvester has gone through there, around the outside at farm corner, and up into seventh position. So Rath possibly not enjoying these conditions. behind is uh, something a little bit different. Yeah, that's Brad Kaler's uh, TCR car. Audi TCR car. I mean, it looks, uh, looks great, doesn't it? It does. Uh, running in uh, 12th and 13th position of these two. Tattle's got a head on this lap by the looks of it. Yeah. Uh, Brad Kaler in the uh, number 87 Audi. <laughs> The TT is going into limp mode for some reason. And the pit window is just about to open, so it'll be my turn to get in the car. My feet are wet through. Need to change my socks. Need to group and get in. Get ready. Sounds like a bag of nails. Oh, and problems for number six. That's Dylan Brichter. He's parked up now. The Audi TT is out of the race here. It doesn't look like Ryan Parkin is going to get a go here. Dylan Brichter pulled up on the side of the road on lap nine of the race. So I'm just getting ready, and then looks like the TT's retired for some reason. We'll dig it back, figure out what's wrong with it. No, I'm not going to go this time. At least Dylan got to go this time, but. If it were a good go, we'll ask him and see what he reckons. But yeah, I'm gonna let Josh get this camera while I go and retrieve my gloves that the scrutiny has stole from me. And, uh, yeah, get packing up.
that's where the Brichter car stopped, down there in the uh, pit lane, and that's the view from on board the dark side developments car. The situation not developing particularly favourably for Brichter there. <laughs> Oh, and into the pits now comes uh, Dan Sylvester. So into the pits comes Dan Sylvester, the first of the uh, people making a mandatory stop in this race, I think. So we'll stay on board with him for the moment. Mindful of the pit lane speed limit of 60 kilometres per hour. You can see if that uh, readout is right on the dash, he's doing about 57, 58 kph now. Uh, not wanting to uh, incur the wrath of the officials for the speed gun. But there's the dark side car. You see it parked in at 45 degree angle. That's part of the regulations. Cars can't uh, just drive straight in, and they have to be then pushed back uh, by the team before they can get back out in the race. But that's not going to happen for a little while because it's a three and a half minute stop uh, that has to be made here. So there's no need for the team to rush, and they do look relatively relaxed about how they're going about their business here. Brad Kaler's Audi, you can see, see, is heading into the pit lane as well. The uh, fuel jug is Mark Dizon. Of course, because it's a, a diesel uh, golf here for the Class B, the, the specialism of dark side developments. Diesel tuning. Bossy, didn't you, Danny boy? Yeah, we got that. Happy. Yeah, yeah. What I'm did you do with that Cooper for ages and they got me on last corner then when I was just yeah. coming out of it? Ah, oh, well. Now oh, we're good, Jordan. It's good it wet, that yeah, is. Yeah, got through it, not to you. It has been all weekend. Right. It needed rebuilding, but. Last race, it? uh, Scott Parkin is being pushed into the pit lane and back out into the race. There he goes. Yep. Heading down the pit lane past the green light. End of the spe speed limit and uh, back into the race he will go. And there's the Brad Kader car also uh, making its exit. down here in the pit lane after the first lot of pit stops and Dan Sylvester, new car for you and a good first stint in tricky conditions. Yeah, yeah, it was a good first stint. managed to um, get in, in front of the class, uh, sorry, again the class lead. And yeah, it was all over the shop a bit because we were, thought we were all going to get two green flag laps and we only got one. So it was all a bit scattered at the start, but yeah, the car feels mega. It's the golf last weekend, so appreciate Scott letting me take it out. And um, yeah, hopefully he can uh, bring home a win. It's obviously been a very successful car for Scott, so your first time racing it. Okay, the conditions aren't ideal, but what do you think of it? It's a brilliant car, yeah, I really like it. I've driven it on track before, on track days, and it's, uh, it's really good for a diesel Golf. That's what you've got to remember what it is, it's a diesel Golf, so yeah, um, yeah, it's wicked. You mentioned there that it's the last time for the car, so is it, can you tell us about the plans for the team for next year? Oh, well, I might be revealing secrets <laughs> there, I don't know, but um, I'm grateful to Scott for letting me take it out anyway, because um, I'm currently in the top 10 on Autosport nationally, that's why he's let me drive it. If I get a couple of wins this weekend, I might be up near the top, so yeah. that's why I'm here, so thanks a lot to Scott for letting me take his car out.
class positions, class B being led still by, or by Podnuch, left it now of course after Dan Stilvester came in, and second in class B now is actually the MX-5 of Ben Shaw. Baganales. Baganales. A bit bad. <sighs> I couldn't tell you if it was bottom endy or top endy or pretty endy though. Ended article. That should be there. We'll fix it and go back out, Dylan. Taylor with the number 87 Audi just behind uh, for the moment. Yeah, that's done in 15th place and it's a lap of drift. So it's Lotus a damage. The
good now. Watch that out of the way, Tom. Good door, go. Back out on circuit there, you can see the number six car, that will be um, Ryan Parkin now above the Audi TT. Uh, Dylan Brick having started the car, but it had those issues that have been injector, rectified. Yeah, an injector, yeah. but it's uh, only running its ninth lap of the race at the moment. The leaders are running lap Never uh, give up. 34. Never give up. It didn't work. Whatever we did, didn't work. Uh, number 95 was 8th, that was the Class B winner, Luke Schlevitz and Kevin Glover in the Java Sport Golf. Second within that class, 11th overall, number 89, Scott Parkin and Dan Silvester. Uh, the champion of the year is here, so let's have a word with Scott. Hello. Scott, the, the wind didn't come, but the season no. has been fantastic. No, definitely not a champion's drive then. <laughs> Danny definitely did a champion's drive, and the first stint, he were absolutely flying. Um, the whole idea was to pit as early as possible, but I think in those conditions, really, I should have made the decision to leave him out for yeah. longer. So he came, he came in more or less bang on the pit window opening uh, time and then by that point the tyres had cooled down so I went out and they were on the radio telling me the times Luke were doing yeah. and he were taking two seconds, three seconds out as I got up to speed and then by the time I got up to speed they pitted then I were knocking a little bit out with Kevin but I think then they had the measure of me definitely so yeah not a champion's drive that one but you know the whole season, talk, let's talk about that because so many victories over the course of the year in a, in a, I guess it's a family run business uh, yeah. convert, being converted uh, into this car. Tell us a bit about that. Uh, yeah, so obviously it's me and my brother, and then we've got a big team of guys who obviously 
without them we wouldn't be here uh, not just in terms of racing but in terms of the business as well so thanks to all them you know it's been a, a really good season it's a shame that I can't make the end of season um, oh, okay. awards, uh, so I thank them all then, so I suppose I can thank them now. So, yeah, appreciate all the help that everybody does for us and all, all his family, all his friends who support us as well. So, yeah, really appreciate it. Like I say, without them, this wouldn't happen. What is your plan for next season? Um, so we've got the two TTs, we're going to convert the other one to diesel and then me and Ryan need to have a showdown as to who's going to do Class A, who's going to do Class B. Yeah. So I'd like to do Class A, but if Ryan really wants to do it, then he can do it. <laughs> so that's all we've got to be discussed over the next yeah, few months. Exactly. Argued, not discussed, I think. <laughs> well, yeah. well done on your season, Thank well you done. So there's Scott Parkin, the Tigewa Club Enduro Champion for 2023. He's here, man of the moment. I got What's told, up? I got told for the minute I'm disqualified. Why? Oh, yes. After checkered flag, went round first corner, lost back end. That's right, yeah, yeah. Lost yeah. back end, and normally I'd have just stamped my foot down and pulled out of it. Because there were JC, the JCB there, I thought, oh, I'll go on to the runoff. Went on the runoff, touched the brakes, it was like being on ice. Oh, so I'm in my van, and I'm going home because this drama. We'll talk about it later. I'm media guy. <laughs> media guy. I am media guy now. I'm media guy now. Yep. I will film everything. How's your weekend been, Harry? Well, you know, right then. Right then, ups right. and downs. Ups and downs. Ups and downs. Then all the way. I'm now media man. Yeah. Be like me, you'll be financially ruined <laughs> within 10 working days. That's when jobs are offered. All of these three simple arrows. <laughs> Buy a car for 400 pounds. Plow at least 30 to 40 grand in <laughs> Then get bored of that hobby because you're sick of spending money on it. Take up gym. Spend all your money on protein and masking and shit. And elbow wraps and sleeves and a ton of free. So, not often we finish a race vlog with me sat in the office, but I had to leave. Scott didn't get the memo that he needed to finish the video off. And as you watched already, Paul wore a. Uh, taking the mickey a bit, so we took the mickey out of Paul. But anyway, so watching the footage back of what Scott did, obviously at the time when he came up to me and said what had happened, I didn't know how fast he was going, what had happened and stuff like that. From the outside, from Grant's video that he took, it didn't look too good. From the onboard, to be fair, it looked worse than it actually was, in my opinion. If I were in the car, I'd have been a bit worried what were happening, but the thing with racing is, when you dial it back a little bit, like, right, the race is over, or there's a safety car, or what have you. That's generally when the mistakes seem to happen, because you're not as sort of laser focused as what's going on. And what Scott said, he sort of backed off as he went over the start finish line, which is correct. But then, if you look at what he did, he didn't really break into the first corner. He was waving at the marshals and paying more attention to that, really, than the fact that they were going around the corner. What should have been, I don't know, what, how much slower should you go after the after it's done, these yellow flags getting waved. In race, in race trip, not a lot of people go much slower when the yellow flags are getting waved. But at the end of the race, maybe he should have been going a bit slower. But he didn't break hard enough. And then when he did break, it were on the marbles and the slippy stuff, and then he went towards the ground. But at worst, even if he'd been going at full race pace and did what he did, he'd have gone a little bit into gravel, I'd have said. That'd have been it, and it'd have been, he'd have deserved what he got if he went into the gravel. But he got three points, a warning, and then when he appealed it, they upheld the appeal, and that could have meant he was disqualified, which then meant he couldn't drop the score, which then meant he'd have lost the championship and it'd have gone to the guys who they won that race, but they've come second to Scott most of the season. So 
that had been unfortunate and, and I'd say unfair given he didn't do anything really. It could have prevented some of the events that happened. But the other thing that happened when he went up to race control, he was getting judged by people that after the judgment had been made, Scott just asked the question, have any of you guys been in a race car before? I think there were four people there and only one of them had many years ago. So can somebody who's not driven a race car or even been in a race car really judge whether somebody's in control, done something silly, been malicious? I don't know, because nobody knows what's going through people's heads. And if you don't understand how a race car works, how a wet, drying, greasy, changeable track with loads of oil getting spilt all over the place, how that's going to react and how you're going to react when you get in that situation. I don't think you can if you've not been in the car. So rather than moaning about it and saying X, Y, Z, because this year does seem like a lot of people, like we know a lot of race drivers and a lot of people, I'd say the fair drivers, because we always get commented that me and Scott are quite fair. If we're having a battle, it's not push your way to the front and um, give a bit of room. And obviously you'd expect the same back. You don't always get it. But I think <clears throat> what would be a good thing to do It'd be open it up to all the marshals, the clerks, the course, everybody who's involved, because a lot of these people are unpaid as well. There's only very few people who work in racing that get paid. Obviously, it costs the people that are racing a lot of money, but the people that are actually there to let us play in their sort of toy box, they're not getting paid. And I think that's unfair in some ways. And just waving at them on the way past when they sat there all day freezing like mad or up in an office all day looking at numbers and arguing with people who are not happy, I think they deserve a bit more. So I think what, what we propose and hopefully some other race teams will get in touch. So please, if you're a marshal or anybody who works in the racing, any, at any point, whether in the offices or whatever, even if you're just at the track and you're making sure people don't park in a stupid spot, we'd like to take you out in our cars. Not really let you drive them, that might be a bit of a stretch, but just take you out in the cars on a track day or whatever we can organise or whenever we can organise it. And it'd be nice if other race teams can do the same, or stick passenger seats in all the cars and just take people out. We can get... 20 or 30 people in each car in a day. So that's a lot of people we can get through. And just a couple of hot laps, just to show how much on the limit you can be just on a track day, never mind racing with 10 people around you, overtaking on corners, going around blind bends and not knowing what's around the corner. There's a lot expected of racing drivers, but there's also a lot expected of the people around it. So I think that's a way of giving back what we can do. This could have easily been a 10 minute me ranting on and moaning about how people don't know what they're on about and all this sort of stuff, but that's not really the way to move forward if you ask me. So maybe I'm overstepping the mark doing it. We'll send this to race clubs and just say, is this something that you'd want to promote? Is this something you want to do? But it's something that we wouldn't have to do it at one event and that's the only event. If you ever see our cars there and you can see it's got a passenger seat in it and we've not got any real specific testing purpose, we're just there maybe just to do a bit of long runs and just see how the car fares. Anybody's welcome to get in our cars anyway. We're pretty fair with that. We'll say no sometimes, but there's no harm in asking. So let's just see. Stick in the comments if you're a race team and you want to help, help us out and we'll try and organise something. If we get enough teams together, we can maybe organise a day where it's just race teams taking people out and everybody knows what's happening. Maybe we'll get a little bit close to each other and say, have a look in your mirror, see what you can see. So I don't know. We'll see. But thanks a lot for watching this. This is the last race of the season. There's not much else for us going to happen until probably March, April time now. We're going to do a bit of testing here and there. But yeah, thank you for watching. Hopefully it weren't too ranty or too whingy. That's, that weren't the intention anyway. But if Scott were doing it at the time, it definitely would have been because he, he felt a bit aggrieved. But everybody always does. Nobody likes going to the headmaster's office and being told off. You lot, inside. None of you are listening. Look at that glazed expression on your faces. But again, it'd be nice to um, put everybody on more of a level playing field. It's not to get any favouritism, just a bit of awareness. And it'll be fun as well. So, cheers.